Hello from Tennessee. So a few days ago, I tried to review my Breitling Super Ocean. I wrote down the specs. I was going to go through it. Uh, and I just had a hard time with it. There's plenty of great videos out there on that watch. And so I got thinking, I wanted to do something, but I think it needs to be in relationship to some other watches. Uh, so that's what I've got lined up. I'll be right back. Okay, like I've stated several times, the, the thought of doing this channel or the focus of this channel is to document my journey. And so, like I indicated in the intro, I struggled to do a review. And when I say review, I talk about traditional review on the Breitling Super Ocean. So it got me thinking um, that I wanted to look at what I would consider my higher end divers in my collection. These are three of my divers. Um, I've got some more affordables too. I have a SKX um, 007. I've got a Vostok. Um, I've got a Zelos and I have a Luminox too as well. But for this particular discussion, ramble, however you want to frame it up, I wanted to talk about these three watches. Like I showed in the intro, the Breitling Super Ocean, my latest acquisition, um, Squale 1521 Full Luminous, and one I've had for a while, um, my Oris Aquis uh, Caliber 400. So these are all really, to start off with, they're at different price points too as well. In terms of retail, um, I'm gonna go from the lowest to the highest. The, the Squale is probably, is the least expensive. Um, that's around 1100 retail. The uh, Oris uh, is 3500 retail. Um, these you can't find anymore because they're discontinued. Um, I believe at the time we're right around 4200 retail. Uh, side note. I did not pay retail for any of these watches, full retail or for any of these watches too as well. So um, if you look around, deals can be had, you make relationships, um, you can find deals. Uh, so, so why these three right here? Um, if you look at them, there's, there's a couple different aspects, but first off, if you look at the case design, so the case design on the Breitling Super Ocean here, it's obviously a little bit more of a chunky watch, um, but not overly, not overly big, but it definitely has some heft on the wrist. And you've got some unique case design. You've got a crown guard. And I just think it's just an awesome, an awesome case design. If we go to the Aquas, obviously a very unique case design that it's its own thing. Nobody else really mimics this or comes close in my opinion. And just a, just a very unique case design where it's super comfortable. And then this watch really surprised me. Um, you just get a quick drop down there. It's just so comfortable on the wrist. As you can see on this one too, um, the crown positioning, or the crowns are a little bit different on each one too as well. This is obviously a, a recessed four o'clock crown. These, these other two are three o'clock crowns. This one doesn't have any crown guards on it. This by far is um, the easiest crown to operate. Um, it's got good grip on it um, and easy to access. And I guess you do have crown guards, uh, but they don't protrude as much as they do on the super on the super ocean 
and this crown's a little bit tougher to manipulate, as is the, the squally. So you've got so you've got that going there. And then um, if you look at let's lump these together quick. Let's look at just the bezel and the dial color. So this one, the Aquas, I've got a ceramic bezel. Um, excellent, excellent action on it. And, uh, you know, a, a beautiful sunburst blue dial. The Breitling Super Ocean has, I don't know, it's, is it DLC coded? I'm not 100% sure. Um, but it's definitely different. It's more of a matte, and you can see that those indices uh, on the bezel themselves are kind of raised up and, uh, you know, metal. Um, in terms of action on it, it is, uh, again, awesome. And you get this matte black dial too as well. So, uh, obviously different than the blue, um, but very versatile watch. And then you've got the Squala here. I guess it's an aluminum bezel, I'm pretty sure. Um, and again, just fantastic action. This, this watch has really surprised me. The quality, the quality on this watch, I'm not going to say... I'd be a bold say, but to say it rivals the uh, the Breitling and the the Oris, but it, this is a this is a solid watch for the price point. And then you get this you get this just funky cool dial. This is just a this is just a fun watch and one that's fun uh, to wear around the house, into the pool and stuff. Um, probably won't make it into the work rotation, but um, just so uniquely different and is a full loom dial. Um, so, in terms of collection strategy, what I've realized is certain watches fill a niche, and I, I think these three watches exhibit that. You know, this this watch here is a little bit more conservative. Um, it has an ETA movement in it, movement in it, um, but but it's but it's I don't know. I, I think it's classic. And I love the fact that it's discontinued now. Um, I, I just, I, I just really, really, really like this watch. It's in my work rotation, and I just very much enjoy wearing it. The Aquas is also in my work rotation, and um, I love the fact that it's got that caliber four hundred. Um, it's definitely. You definitely pay a premium for that for the for the caliber 400 I, I still think it's cool in terms of diversity and you know i've got like i indicated the the breitling has a, cro a chronometer certified uh, eta in it the squally has i believe a salida in it and then this has its um you know proprietary movement too as well which um get you the back shot there which is just I don't know. It's just cool to have that um, too, as well. I, I really enjoy this watch, and it's got some interesting uh, technology in terms of strap changes. This, you can see that there. Those flip down, and I also have the rubber on it too, as well, um, for it. And you can kind of see the hooks there too, as well. So, so it gives you just a little bit more technology. Um, so when I'm when I'm looking for the next diver, the next watch I'm looking for, I kind of do it into relationship with what I already have here. And um, I'm struggling to find the, ne the next watch without getting rid of one of these. Uh, so I'm kind of at a good place for divers right now. You know, that, that could change. Uh, but I'm realizing that, you know, diversity in the collection um, is, is important to me. And I, and I think having some, you know, fun affordables, uh, too, as well, um, to kind of fill that niche. Um, I missed, uh, when I was talking about divers at the beginning, I, I have a C Stern too, as well, orange dial, 
um, homage watch. So, uh, but um, I think that's it. I think that's it. I, I don't know if any of this made sense, but like I indicated, I like to document kind of where I'm at. Uh, and I think this is an interesting subset of my collection. I'm going to probably try to do more videos of this because I, I think a lot of my collection strategy so forth is that there are subsets to that collection. And then as I'm adding things into it, um, I'm very cognitive of the fact that where does it fit in the collection? Um, and, and it's taken me a while to get to this point. I've slowed down on my buying and my flipping. And um, I think over time as this is just for me as I've matured as a collector enthusiast hobbyist however you want to frame it up uh, I know what I like um, and I'm willing to try some kind of some different things when I I'm going to ramble on just another second when I first started collecting I would have never I probably would have thought this was absolutely the most hideous thing that you've ever seen in your life and now I absolutely love it so so yeah I, I think um, I, I think you develop taste and, and I think sometimes that you want to be a contrarian too and you want to go away from the norm so so that's it for now I appreciate you watching if you hung on this long thank you um, subscribe or like if you like this um, comment uh, I, I love engaging with everybody and as always stay positive make friends enjoy the journey take care everybody bye bye